real inequality. Um, Dr. Yen really touched on, you know, exactly how Hollywood's ran, kind of how the directors um, are mostly white. A lot of uh, a lot of actors, actresses are white. A lot of the stories are white. Many stereotypes against actors of color. Um, one of the first quotes that stood out to me was uh, in in the first chapter on page nine, and it says, "Racism in the form of job exclusion and racially stereotyped roles." has defined the Hollywood film industry since its birth in the early 1900s. So we can only imagine, I mean, in the early 1900s it was probably even much worse than, it's, than it is now, but um, from researching, from, you know, studying what we studied this semester, I mean, you can see that it's still a big issue and there's a lot of problems. Um, there's a lot of inequalities that actors of color face, um, especially women of color, um, I mean, of course men of color also, but particularly, in particular, women of color really face a lot of problems. Um, one thing that they really, uh, one issue that they really faced that stood out to me in the, in the book was that a lot of white producers and directors, um, they make movies that are, that they're familiar with. They're familiar with whiteness, um, white norms, um, and so people of color don't really fit into those norms. Um, people of color can't get hired for these movies, for these shows, because um, the white producers don't need them. They need white people to enact the white, you know, the white culture. So that's kind of, you know, just a little rundown. But um, I have some notes here. But um, something there's somewhere near 80% of producer producers and directors are white. 80%. So that means. The other 20% are all other races, all other ethnicities are, produce, are producers of color. So 80%, that's, I mean, those are just staggering numbers, obviously. Um, I have another quote here for the females, uh, since I was speaking on the females. Otherworldly female characters, which also came in at 3%, meaning that film audiences were as likely to see an alien, an alien woman as an Asian woman in a movie. And that was on page 28. So, I mean, Dr. Yen really gives us a clear example of what it's what it's like out there for in the industry for Asian women. I mean, it's basically impossible for them to get a job um, if they don't fit that stereotype role. Then, you know, there's really no opportunity. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to run the clip of the interviews now because I want you guys to see just kind of some of the answers that my that my friends gave. And then I can elaborate more on those because, you know, there was there was some stuff that was actually, you know, really... Uh, and then let's go with uh, Scarlett Johansson, a big Avengers guy. Um, what's not to like there? Yeah, fair enough. Okay. I've got one more question for you here. Um, okay, so off the top of your head, can you think of any movies, TV shows, really just anything that you've watched that has a cast that does not have any white people in it, that is mostly of people of ethnic other ethnicities? Mostly mainstream movies that are produced here in America tend to have um, American actors and things like that, so I, it's hard to think of even movies that are big box office hits and things like that that made it globally, they still have a very big you know, American population, that presence is there for sure, yeah. all the main actors and actresses. I feel like that's what brings people in to watch those actual shows is seeing their favorite actors and actresses in them. Yeah. Okay. But it's uh, it is hard to think of shows that don't have don't have those demographics. The directors or who's producing that, or is it more just you're just watching it, enjoying it, just tuned in, tuned in. Okay, sweet. Um, okay, so I have another question for you. Off the top of your head, can you think of any movies, any TV shows with a cast that does not consist of white people? It's mostly people of color or different different ethnicities. Can you think of anything? Not off the top of my head, usually there's all the mainstream movies have uh, white actors or actresses involved. Yep, definitely. Oh yeah, I haven't watched that, I heard about it though. Yeah, me and Sabrina are watching that one. Okay. So. Um, do you have a favorite actor or actress? Yes, Will Smith. Will Smith is your favorite actor? All time okay. favorite. So Will Smith, okay, so that means he probably has a lot of your favorite movies, so that kind of goes into the next question. Do you have a... Do you have like any idea or any movies that you can think of that don't have like white, mostly white actors or white actresses or any white actors or actresses in it? 
that don't. Yeah, that don't. Uh, I am Legend by I am Legend. Will Smith. That's Will Smith. Yeah, yeah I, I've or, seen that. Yeah, because he's the only one in the movie, really. Um, and aliens. Yeah. Uh, I was saying. Yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, I Robot. Have you seen I Robot by Will Smith? I haven't seen I Robot. That's an old movie. That one's a. Uh, Will Smith again. <laughs> So, I don't know if you guys noticed some of the stuff that was said in the interview, but um, one thing that really stood out to me was in that in one interview with my buddy, he said that um, he said that mostly a lot of the roles that are played are American roles, and he was saying American as in white, and he was thinking of white as American, even though clearly there's different ethnicities that are American as well, but he was thinking I don't know if he was just thinking that in his head or if he had, you know, or if he was just wrong about that, but that just kind of shows the picture that he creates in his head when he's thinking of movies. He's thinking of whites, he's thinking of American. I mean, he, two, of, two of my buddies couldn't even think of um, people of color in a movie um, with no whites. They couldn't even think of it when I asked him that question. And then my other friend, who's African American, he thought of two movies and I thought it was I, I honestly thought it was hilarious, the two movies that he thought of. It's, it's obviously not hilarious because it, it shows us, you know, kind of the reality. But the fact that he said his two favorite movies with no white people, he said Will Smith in I Am Legend, where he's basically stranded, there's no other characters. And then also I Am I Robot, which it's Will Smith fighting against robots. There's obviously not going to be very many people in that movie. So there's no potential really for white people. So. Just seeing seeing that was uh, honestly very eye-opening. Um, I was pretty shocked, honestly. You know, the fact that he said that, and just in those interviews, I feel like they kind of uh, kind of just show how how power culture is nowadays, and the kind of movies that we watch, the kind of movies that I mean, the shows that we're surrounded by. It's not even that we watch them; we're not even we're not even really presented with you know the opportunity to see shows of ethnicities. And um, one of the things that we saw in the book also uh, is the fact of a single story. Um, we saw that in the chapter, I believe it was chapter three, and um, it's one of their major offenses to society. And they, they continue to center the stories around the single story, which is um, the stories of white people, written by white people, about white people. And they refuse to really, you know, expand, expand roles. Um, I believe, let's see, I had another quote um, in, Chapter 6, it said, Hollywood can expand its definition of American roles by regaining them as multiple, multicultural rather than white. And that was in page 92. So, you know, the industry is really just a white standard. And if we change this to where multicultural is American rather than white is American, as my friend was stating, then we can elaborate more. We can have more idea. We can have more multicultural movies, um, things that, you know, I'm sure people would love because they haven't even heard stories about them. There's very, very, very rarely is there a popular movie out about and you know all African Americans or about all Latinos or even with mixed cultures. It's just it's hard for you know for actors to make you know movies or for producers to make movies like this when they're all white. So you know cutting it kind of from the from the heart is what we really need to do and to make improvements. This is what this is what we need. I mean. Um, I have also in page 83 it says, many actors of color not only experience exclusion from American roles, but also from ethnic roles. If actors do not perform roles with stereotype accents or behaviors, they are, de they are deemed not ethnic enough. And that's in page 83. So that's just another uh, you know, product of Hollywood being so white because you expect an Asian to have an Asian accent or a black man to have a black accent. These white producers are you know, kind of boxing them into a certain role, which is not fair for actors of color. It's not fair for for anyone. I mean, so that's kind of you know the trap that these actors of color are getting into, and just the what they're dealing with and what they're working with. It's really not fair, and it's you know it's honestly completely wrong. But there's something you know there's some things that just are hard to change, and it's something that we have to fight, and everyone has to fight. I uh, have, lastly, another quote in the last chapter, um, which Dr. Yen pushes us in page 159. She states, we must urge Hollywood to move beyond casting actors of color as background extras and stereotypes and instead see them as full range actors capable of embodying a variety of characters. So 
saying that, we, uh, you know, I would love to see more more heroes being people of color, more, more, uh, you know, athletes, any characters. We we don't see a lot of these characters um, being multicultural. We we just see a lot of white, dominantly white in in everything. Um, I look at a statistic, and in 2014. Roughly three quarters of film actors were white in 2014. 73%. 12% were black and the rest um, other. Asian, Hispanic, other. So whites account for almost three quarters of actors. I think that's pretty absurd, especially considering the fact that in Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles, the population, uh, I'm pretty sure over 40% from what I remember from the book, over 40% are Latino and we only have 5% so seeing these numbers is really just eye-opening I mean I mean it's facts straight on straight on a book I mean we all see it everyone sees it it's just a matter of what we can do to change and what we can do to uh, just you know s shortly touch on that um, I have a picture here of Catherine Bigelow um, she is a director and she is only one of five women who have ever been nominated for Best Director and that was as of 2017. Best Director and that was as of 2017. So, and she was the only one that had won as of then. I'm not sure um, now, but um, that is just, I mean, that kind of just shows you right there the gender discrimination. Uh, thinking, I don't know. It's not as much so that they don't believe women can write, but women do not even really have a chance. I mean, 80% of directors and producers are white, I mean, are uh, male, so the women really don't even have a chance in the industry. Um, and as far as actors and as far as actresses go, uh, it's almost the same thing. I mean, these dominant white males, producers, push them around, tell them what to do. Um, you know, make them play a certain role how they want them, regardless. You know, regardless of how what it takes. Um, I put also put also here Kate Beckinsale, who's who is a, an actress, and she was uh, working for her role in Pearl Harbor. And I was reading an article about this, and she had said that the uh, producer. Were